Welcome to the Dash Mindset Podcast. I'm Sherry Ziefenbergen. You were born, you're gonna die, and your adventure is your dash in between. So make the most of it. Unlock your potential in all aspects of your dash by embracing your uniqueness and living in a way that's authentic to you. Not by doing more things, but by focusing on the right things. I'm a former corporate leader turned coach who's on my own journey, and I'm passionate about helping you on your journey too. So on the podcast, we'll explore how to live authentically by deciphering who you truly are and what you truly want. Are you ready to take a step toward designing your dash? Someday doesn't actually exist. So let's do it now. Hello, friends. Sherry Z here. And as usual, I have a story for you today. This is going to be kind of a weird one. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) if that's relative to other ones or just in general. But anyway, last week I had a procedure called a phrenectomy done. And you might be wondering a few things about that. One, what the hell is a phrenectomy? Two, why am I telling you that I had one? And most importantly, how does it apply to you? All valid questions. So for now, I'll just promise it is relevant to you. It does apply and I will tell you how, but first I'll tell you what it is. So basically, I used to be tongue-tied. Now I'm not. I realize it's hard to believe I was ever tongue-tied because talking is not a problem for me. But being tongue-tied is a real thing. And it actually doesn't mean you can't talk. That's just a phrase we use. Sometimes it does. But in my case, it definitely did not. So for me, what being tongue-tied meant was really there was a lot of connective tissue that limited the range of motion in my tongue which is often the case. And it it differs depending upon the person, the severity of it. For me, it was quite severe. And my tongue was essentially tethered, which I realize is really hard to even imagine if you have no idea what the heck I'm even talking about. But my tongue was, there was just a lot of connective tissue. I couldn't, I couldn't move it much. I didn't have, uh, you know, full range of motion. And although I could somehow talk just fine, there were some things I couldn't do, like roll my tongue. You know, like in elementary school when, you know, you'd be goofing around and kids would roll their tongue. Yeah, I couldn't do that. And rolling my eyes in Spanish class, couldn't do that. I couldn't eat peanut butter sandwiches as easily as other people. Something I recognized, which saddened me, but, you know, it didn't prevent me from living my life. I could be just fine with some difficulty eating peanut butter sandwiches because I was able to talk. I was able to eat. I was able to do all the things. So I never really thought too much about it. And so not to get into the details and the biology, for one, because I can't, this is all my version of the details, all very unmedical, but in case it's helpful for anyone in some way, in addition to some people being tongue-tied, some people have, instead, they have extra tissue in other areas of their mouth. So sometimes it, you know, it could be extra gum tissue that causes a gap between their teeth or extra tissue that maybe tethers their lip to their gums. Lots of possibilities here. So the reason I'm telling you that is just in case you're impacted by it, you know someone who's impacted, and you just don't even realize that it's possible to get it fixed because that's where I was with this whole thing. Okay, so that's you know a side note. But anyway, mine happened to be that my tongue was tethered. So that was something I just knew about myself. I was living my life, tongue tied, life was fine. So one day earlier last year, I was at occupational therapy with my son. And that's another fascinating thing I could do a whole episode on. But anyway, she just asked him, she said, hey, buddy, can I take a look under your tongue? And I thought, well, that's curious. (laughs) But I didn't think too much of it because they do all kinds of fascinating things at occupational therapy. And she makes all kinds of connections that I would never in a million years have seen. And so she pointed out he was a bit tongue-tied. She looked under his tongue and pointed out he was a bit tongue-tied. And then I was super confused because I had a severe tongue tie, right? <laughs> so I'm questioning her. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's tongue tied. I'm like, he's he's like Mick Jagger here. What are you talking about? I'm like, this is this is tongue tied. And so I, I'm showing my my son's occupational therapist my tongue. And she says, Sherry, how how do you talk or eat? How do how do you function? <laughs> and then she proceeded to explain all the the impacts that being tongue-tied can have in life on lots of things. It can cause tension, headaches, anxiety, uh, decreased focus, blah, 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 all kinds of things. The list went on and on. And my mind was just blown. 
So at this point, my son's just hanging out. You know, all the focus has shifted entirely to me <laughs> because I'm, I'm just questioning what is happening. He's not really even tongue tied. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's focus on me. And so she's telling me there are books about it. There are podcasts. Podcasts about being tongue tied. I mean, just my whole my brain is exploding at this point. So <laughs> you say, okay, wait, 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 wait. I have had headaches my entire life for as long as I can remember. I mean, truly, for as long as I can remember. And my tongue might be a factor here because I, I get tension headaches, I get migraines. And she says she couldn't be certain, but but maybe it could definitely be part of it. So my mind's just blown. Not only because I'm learning that my son has a slight tongue tie, which is just, I mean, here I am thinking he practically looks like a member of KISS, you know, minus the makeup. But because this was something I knew nothing about. Their podcasts, their books. Yeah, I mean, she's an expert in this. I know nothing about it. And I've been tongue-tied my whole life. And this might be a factor in problems I've been experiencing my whole life. And there was a ton of information I knew nothing about. So that's how this whole journey started, okay? So like I said, I've had headaches for as long as I can remember. Tension headaches migraines. And I have a high pain tolerance. So it's not just that I'm a wuss. And I've actually been told I have a high pain tolerance. I'm not just, you know, being arrogant, I guess. I don't even know if that's arrogant. But so throughout my entire life, I've tried so many things. Stretching, yoga, lots of chiropractors. And and none of them were necessarily bad. It's just, you know, I moved and tried different things. I went to a neurologist at one point. I, you know, stayed with caffeine. I tried no caffeine. I change, have changed my diet. I've tried a number of vitamins and supplements, um, exercise, massage, meditation, pillows, so many pillows. I've tried so many pillows. <laughs> I use a mouth guard at night, um, so many things. And it, it's kind of funny when I think about this because way back in the day of infomercials, if you even know what those are, if you remember what like normal TV is, um, you know, before Facebook could just read our minds and stalk us and suggest things for us. Before that, if I was ever watching an infomercial and I was intently watching it, I could I could practically feel my husband's look on his face. <laughs> He's watching me intently watching this infomercial and just thinking, oh no, is she gonna is she gonna dial the number? Is she gonna order this thing? <laughs> If it had anything to do with something that might help my headaches, it, it you know I was I was probably going to call the number on the infomercial. So I've had lots of pillows. I've had gadgets. It, it's kind of a running joke, but the important thing to note is that everything I've tried has helped in some way. It truly has. Now, in some cases, it may have helped by simply narrowing down, narrowing it down to what you know, what works versus doesn't work in some cases. Um, for instance, I know super firm pillows make it worse. I know that. Okay, narrowed it down. So now, you know, I don't have to have 40 new pillows. I've, I've narrowed it down, right? Got it. Don't need any more firm pillows. But in most cases, whatever I've tried actually has improved my tension, has improved my headaches in some way, even if it didn't eliminate my headaches entirely. So, you know, I'm glad I've tried all those things because all of those things are something that, you know, I still have in my life and have improved my overall life, you know, still today. So that's what leads me to how this is relevant to you. So as I share all these things, if you're tongue-tied or not, there is some relevance to you. And I'd really... I really encourage you to think through, okay, how might some of these things be showing up in your life? Okay. So one, pay attention when someone mentions something that might help you in some way. We don't know what we don't know. I never in a million years would have considered the fact that my tongue had anything to do with anything other than my, you know, challenges with eating peanut butter sandwiches. Okay which didn't hold me back, by the way, is just more challenging than for other people. So when my son's OT mentioned the whole tongue tie thing, I could have easily ignored her and just thought, no, you, you don't know what you're talking about, right? I mean, I could totally just dismiss her. 
especially given the fact that I've been thinking my son was, you know, pretty much Mick Jagger. I could have thought she's nuts. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But instead, I thought, seriously, I should have been sharing this with my chiropractors, with my doctors, with my physical therapists, basically everyone in my life, my entire life. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know this was something I should be shared. So I'm thinking, okay, who else should I be sharing all this with? Should I put up a billboard? Should I tell the checkout lady at Target? I mean, is this something that she needs to know? Because maybe I'll get an additional discount with my, you know, what if I use my Target app? I don't know. I, I mean, my, my mind is just blown. So because I didn't just dismiss my son's OT, I started down this journey of figuring out, okay, what makes sense? Who do I need to talk to? What are all the things I need to research? And I figured it out. And now my tongue tie is fixed. Now, I don't know if my tongue procedure is going to eliminate all my problems. In fact, I'm certain it won't. I know I'll still have more headaches, but I know it has helped. In fact, as the doctor was doing it, I was totally numb. And don't worry, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of what was going on. But I didn't know what exactly she was doing. I was numb. And even though she explained it really well in advance, I was attempting to distract myself during the whole thing. So (laughs) she's doing her thing. And all of a sudden, I felt like this release in my neck and shoulders, almost as if if you were to have a really tight rubber band and have tension in rubber band, and all of a sudden you just released it. That's what it felt like in my neck and shoulders. And it wasn't like this gigantic feeling. In fact, it was, it was just subtle enough that I thought, am I crazy? (laughs) And so I asked the doctor afterward, I said, okay, when she's all done and everything, I said, okay, this, I'm pretty sure I felt like some sort of a release. Was that in my head? Was it the numbing medication? You know, what was it? And she said it, it absolutely could have been due to the procedure. It made complete sense because everything's connected. And it was something that she had said other people had experienced as well, which is just nuts, right? I mean, it makes complete sense, but at the same time, it just seems so nuts. So I know, I'm absolutely certain it is helping me in a lot of ways, a lot of ways I don't even recognize yet. Now, I still can't roll my R's. Maybe I'll never be able to roll my R's. I don't know. I'm not a fluent Spanish speaker yet, nor will I probably ever be, but it has absolutely helped me in a lot of ways. So my point is, I encourage you to just try new things, be open to trying different things. And rather than dismissing something, if you hear about or or you see something and you think, maybe that's something that would work for me, just consider it and really weigh the options. Think about, okay, what could the risks be of trying this? What do I have to lose? What could be the benefits, right? So rather than dismissing something right away, just consider it. Give it some attention. Another thing that I would love for you to consider is the importance of recognizing that there's no one person or one thing that can solve all your problems. Just like my tongue tie procedure isn't going to solve everything, right? In fact, it's unlikely any one thing or person will eliminate even one problem for you or for me. So be open to trying multiple things. So whether you're tongue-tied or not, and I realize you're probably not, I just encourage you to think about how this applies in your life. Where might you be thinking one thing or one person should be able to solve a problem for you? Or where one thing or person should be able to meet all your needs? Because that's not usually actually how it works. And one reason why it's not possible is because There's always more to it than simply just having the right tool or having the right procedure, whether it's something health-related, it's something, it's someone's expertise, maybe it's the right time management plan or whatever it is. There's more to it for the change to be entirely effective than just having the thing or just having one person's expertise. It requires looking at and understanding the entire picture, the big picture, And it takes having the right mindset around it as well. It really requires a shift in our beliefs. So for instance, even if I had found the perfect pillow at one point in my life, and I thought, oh, this is going to eliminate all my headaches, right? Let's say I 
you know, the 20th pillow I tried, that was the one. But I was working 70 hour weeks, like I did in my early 20s, which seems so ridiculous now. But anyway, found the perfect pillow when I was 22. I was working 70 hours a week. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't eating right. All the things. The pillow in itself would not have performed miracles because I wasn't in the right space. I was stressed. I didn't like my job and I definitely didn't have the right mindset. So just that one thing wasn't going to to fix everything for me. It takes a lot of things. It takes a really, it takes an understanding of the big picture. So there might be a number of factors involved, right? So a lot of times it can be easy for us to say, oh, I tried that thing. It didn't work. So apparently it's just, you know, I'm not going to be able to solve my problem. And it's easy to just stop trying anything else, right? But we need to consider the whole picture. And we also really need to consider the mindset that's required for whatever the change is that we're trying trying to do. It's also easy to think that one person should be able to answer all our needs. So, you know, just let's stick with the medical field. Often someone will go to a doctor and think, well, he thought I was fine. So I guess I'll just deal with it, right? Because that one doctor thinks it's fine. Or maybe you go to a doctor and think, oh, I'm just going to do what he says because, you know, he told me to take this medication. Maybe it's a doctor, whomever. And we go with this expectation that that person is the expert. So we'll go with that. We'll just, we'll just do what that person says or not do what that person says, whatever it is, right? But there is no one person that is an expert in all things. No one has a holistic understanding of everything about you. So it might take multiple people, whether it's experts in the medical field, whether it's, you know, friends, family, whomever you're looking to, to meet your needs. There's no one person who can possibly meet all your needs. There's no one expert who can possibly meet all your needs because no one knows every little thing about you and no one is an expert in everything. So in my case, for instance, I go to an amazing physical therapist. Fantastic. Has really helped my headaches in a lot of ways. I go to an amazing massage therapist who a client happened to recommend. So I've, I've seen some wonderful massage therapists in my day. A client recommended this one. I thought, you know, I'm just going to give her a try. Fantastic. The other ones have been great, but she is exactly what I needed. Nothing wrong with the other ones, but she's the best fit for me. So I'm an amazing physical therapist, I'm an amazing massage therapist. I go to an amazing chiropractor who my physical therapist actually recommended. And each of them supports me in different ways. So had I had, I had the expectation that just one of those people would have eliminated my headaches, for example... I would have been severely disappointed and I would have just stopped there, right? So in addition to that, my physical therapist is the one who recommended I go to the speech therapist I've been seeing regarding my tongue. And my speech therapist is the one who recommended the particular dentist I went to for my procedure. So it takes more than a village is my point. (laughs) And in fact, my speech therapist knows a ton of dentists, but few of those dentists even specialize in phrenectomies or or possibly even know what it is, right? Because they have a certain expertise and some of them have expertise that does not extend beyond normal, I'm doing air quotes, dentistry, because that's just not their thing. Yet we often have this assumption that, oh, this person is an expert in X. They should know everything that's even related to X, right? But that's just not the case. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with them. It just means that no one person can meet our needs. So along my journey of investigating all of this and going down the path of working with my chiropractor and my physical therapist and my steep beach therapist and all these people, one of the people I went to along my journey was an ear, nose, throat doctor or an auntie. So I went to him and thought, well, maybe he can do it a time release for me. And so I went and talked to him and I was trying to figure out, okay, who do I need to talk to first from an insurance standpoint, all the things, right? So I go to this ENT and he was not an expert in this area, which, you know, I don't hold against him. It wasn't his thing, but he basically humored me and said, 
huh, yeah. Because I asked him, you know, I, I explained the whole thought process around getting my um, tongue tied. And he basically humored me. And he said, hmm, yeah, I, I don't really know how that would help your headaches. That's not something I've heard about. But I mean, if you keep getting them, it's, it's something to consider. <laughs> Here I am. I'm sitting in this guy's office. I'm 48 at the time. And so, I mean, I just knew there's no point in, you know, there's no point in me explaining myself to this guy. I don't need to persuade him. That's not, you know, whether he's on my side or not. And now that he wasn't on my side, whether he believes me or not is irrelevant. I just know he's not my people. He doesn't have the expertise I need. Okay, moving on. So, I just knew he, I mean, apparently I was supposed to wait until I was 58 years old to get it done and just, you know, wait another 10 years. I don't know. But so I didn't bother trying to persuade him. I didn't bother sharing my perspective. I just said, okay, I knew he wasn't for me. So that leads me to another point. If someone, if you have something in your mind that you think, okay, well, maybe this is going to work and it's something you're exploring. If someone acts like you're a little nut somewhere along the way, And this applies in all aspects of your life, not just, you know, if you're tongue-tied and you're considering (laughs) getting a procedure done, all aspects of your life. If someone acts like you're a little nuts somewhere along the way, it doesn't mean you are. Everyone on the planet sees the world through their own lens. That's just how it works. And it's different from your lens. So that doesn't mean you should just stop and believe them and give up because that person has a particular perspective. It just means they're looking at it through their lens. And that person might just not be a great fit for you or what you're looking to do. So when you're told no, keep going and decide what's right for you. Sometimes it might make sense to stop and think, oh, okay, well, I've talked to, you know, 47 people, none of whom think this is a great idea. It's something to consider. But don't don't stop based upon what one particular person says or on what society deems appropriate, right? I mean, for me, it wasn't the ENT's fault that he wasn't familiar with the implications of being tongue-tied. It wasn't his fault. He went to school. He had a very specific experience. And that's the case with most professionals. That's the case with any area of expertise, really. It wasn't his fault. I'm not faulting him for that. I just knew, okay, he's not my person. So not, not everyone... Not everything is going to be before you. So it's just a matter of recognizing who is and who isn't. And, you know, mentioning the whole thing about what society deems appropriate, that changes too. At one point, it was common practice to snip babies' tongues when they were born. If they were tongue-tied, it's just, you know, that was common practice. Then somewhere along the way, they realized, they, the medical field, I guess, realized it wasn't always necessary. That maybe the risk of infection or the risk of something going wrong might not be worth it. So... There was an entire shift from an industry standpoint. At one point, everybody said, yeah, we should do this. Now, and then it shifted to to people not doing it. Now, a lot of experts, not all of them, but a lot, are recognizing the connection between being tongue-tied and a lot of other things. So it's shifting back again. But there's still going to be people who just, you know, don't have that experience, who don't have that expertise, who don't have that perspective. So... People's perspectives are constantly changing and people's perspectives are going to be their own. So really think that through, okay, what is right for you, regardless of society's perspective, regardless of an individual's perspective, what's right for you? Okay, my next point. Everything is connected. Everything we do, everything we don't do, it impacts something and someone else in some way. And when something goes unaddressed, we compensate in other ways. We don't always see it, especially when it's in ourselves. It's always easier to see in other people, right? It's especially hard when it's within ourselves. So this could show up in a lot of ways. An example might be maybe you're struggling with a bad relationship with your spouse, with someone at work, whomever, and you just don't have the energy to put into it. Maybe you don't have the patience. Maybe you just don't want to take the time to figure it out. It could be a variety of things. And so you're distracting yourself with more work. You're compensating by, by working more hours. And that's leading to all kinds of other challenges, right? Or maybe you're compensating in some other way. Maybe you're filling a void by shopping more. 
maybe Amazon is delivering on a daily basis versus a weekly basis, right? And that's creating problems in some other way. Maybe it's completely different. Maybe it's something medical. Maybe you're having back problems and maybe you're just hoping those will go away or, you know, just ignoring them for now, hoping that they'll just correct themselves. And in the meantime, it's messing up the way you walk, which isn't something that we generally notice about ourselves, right? And so you're compensating in that way without even realizing it. And that might be causing hip problems or knee problems or some other problems of some sort that you just can't even see. Often these side effects just aren't apparent to us and we just don't even see how we might be compensating in other ways. Now for me, completely different situation, right? I was completely unaware of the connection between my tongue and everything else until I heard, oh, wait, the, your tongue is the starting point of the fascia and muscle in your body and all these things that was completely foreign to me. So I was compensating in all kinds of ways I didn't realize. And when I finally met with my speech therapist, she pointed out it was likely a big reason why my jaw is always sore, why I grind my teeth at night, why I've been wearing a mouth guard at night for years. She said it was likely a factor in my needing crowns in my back teeth because my tongue just didn't clean my teeth like it should. It didn't reach the back of my mouth. And so even though I had been brushing my teeth twice a day my entire life, thinking, you know, I had this great oral hygiene, I was still compensating in other ways because simply because my tongue wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. So I realize this, this is a bit of an extreme story, right? But there are so many parallels in life. So what I encourage you to think about is where you might be compensating in some area of your life. Sometimes the discomfort of addressing something holds us back. Or we think, I just don't want to spend the time or the money. I don't have the patience. I just don't, I just don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to address it. And, and those are valid, right? But I encourage you to ask yourself, what not addressing whatever the thing is, what not addressing it is costing you. Because there's always going to be a cost to it, either now or later, right? So just consider that, something to consider. Finally, my last point, whatever happens, it happens when it's supposed to. You hear what you're supposed to hear. You learn what you're supposed to learn when you're supposed to learn it. For me, I could regret not having gotten my tongue procedure done earlier. I mean, I'm 49. I'm just getting this done. So, I mean, it could have been, would have been easy for me to say, oh, pff, who knows how much longer I'm going to live, right? But I just wasn't supposed to have it done sooner. I was supposed to have it done at 49 for some reason. I don't know why. But I do know this is the point in my life at which I had all the right people. It had been presented as an option a long time ago when I was in my early 20s and I had my wisdom teeth removed. For some reason, I don't know why, but it was mentioned in a video when I went in for my pre-op, um, my pre-surgery consult. And I don't know why this was shared as an option to get my tongue cut at that point. I, I don't know why it was included, but I, I distinctly remember it being included in this video. This and, and they said, oh, if you have a tongue tie, you could also get that cut during your surgery. Something along those lines. I'm sure it was, you know, shared far more eloquently than that. But they also, you know, they talk about this quick procedure. And I also remember in the video that they were saying, you know, it could, you know, just be aware of these potential outcomes. It could cause paralysis, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so while watching the video, I considered it for a quick minute. But I immediately thought, nah. You know, risk of paralysis probably doesn't outweigh the ease of eating peanut butter sandwiches. So I'm okay. So I didn't put much thought into it at that point. And that, so at the time, that was it. I had zero idea about the connection to anything else. And so it wasn't meant to be at that point. And if I had done it then, the dentist would have taken my wisdom teeth out, I guess cut my tongue and sent me home. So who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have been able to talk. I had, I had no understanding of anything. And I definitely didn't have a speech therapist in my life at that point to help me understand the whole picture and, you know, what the consequences potentially were and what the benefits potentially were. I had none of that. So I'm so glad I didn't do it earlier in my life. 
And I know that it was supposed to happen now for whatever reason. I have all the right people now and all of that played a factor. So just try not to stay bogged down in any regret of any sort. If at some point you do decide, okay, I want to make this change. I want to address this thing. Why didn't I do it sooner? It's easy to get bogged down to that, but there is a reason for it. There is. Sometimes we just don't see it. So to recap, here are the parallels I would love for you to consider in your own life. One, pay attention when you hear about something new that might help you in some way. When you have that moment when you think, hmm, maybe, don't just dismiss it. Pay attention. Rather than immediately just dismissing it, consider the what ifs, not just the what ifs about what you could potentially lose and all of the bad things that could potentially happen, but what you could potentially gain as well. Our brains are wired to focus on loss, so we often fail to consider what we could potentially gain too. So stay open to new ideas, trying different things, and just, you know, don't dismiss it when something pops in your head. Second, remember, there is no one person or one thing that can solve all your problems, or even one person or thing that will eliminate even one problem for you. It's usually a combination of things. It's usually a combination of people. Everyone has certain things they can offer. No one has everything you need. When someone acts like you might be a little crazy, not if, but when someone acts like you might be a little crazy, when someone tells you no, or someone suggests you shouldn't be doing something, that doesn't necessarily mean you should stop. Just consider it. Take that as information. Take it as data and decide what's right for you, regardless of what one person or maybe even several or society believes to be true. Four, everything is connected. Everything you do, everything you don't do impacts something and someone else. And when something goes unaddressed, you compensate in other ways. That's just what happens. And we often don't even see it. So think about how that might be playing out in your life and what you can potentially do about it. And last, whatever happens, it happens when it's supposed to happen. It doesn't necessarily become apparent about how or why, but it does. So try not to get bogged down in regret and just accept that whatever it is, it all worked out just at the right time. So that's it for today, folks. Thank you for listening to my tongue story. And I hope this allows you to consider some of the parallels in your own life Tongue tied or not, I'm guessing you're not. (laughs) I hope you were able to see some of the parallels. And if you would like support in any area of your life, working through any of those parallels, let's connect. I would love to connect. Reach out to me on my website at the-mindset.com and let's just have a chat. See how I can help. See if we're a good match. I hope you have an amazing couple weeks and I will see you again soon. Thanks so much for listening to the Dash Mindset Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Tell your friends and leave us a review. Follow me on my social media platforms highlighted in the show notes and get in touch with me at the-mindset.com. Share the topics you'd like me to explore in future episodes. Thanks again for listening to the Dash Mindset Podcast. We'll see you next time. Design and differentiate your Dash, your way, and make today amazing.